Okay, so today we begin with uh, May 2012. May 2012. Question uh, that should be question 4B. Question 4B. May 2012. Question 4B. Says that the following data leads to the operations of an oh, sorry. Tam Tam Food is a middle class restaurant that is only open in the evening. The restaurant has eight staff who are each paid at the wage rate of 96 per hour on the basis of hours actually worked. The restaurant has a restaurant manager and a head chef, each of whom is paid a monthly salary of. 51,600. The following data relates to the operations from the month of April 2012. We have the number of meals, we have the revenue, food, drinks, total revenue, variable cost, staff wages, food costs, uh, drink costs, electricity costs, total variable costs, contribution, fixed costs for the managers and chefs salary, rent and depreciation, total fixed costs, and the operating profit. Now we are told that the restaurant is only open six days a week, and there are four weeks in a month. The average number of orders each day is 50, and demand is evenly spread across all the days in the month. The restaurant offers two meals, meal A, which costs uh, shillings 420 per meal, and meal B, which costs shillings 540 per meal. In addition to this, irrespective of which meal the customer orders, <coughs> the average customer consumes four drinks each at shillings 30 per drink. Therefore, the average spend per customer is either 540 or 60 including uh, soft drinks, depending on the type of uh, meal selected. The April budget is based on 50% of customers ordering meal A and 50% of customers ordering meal B. Uh, then food costs represent 12.5% of revenue from food sales. Drink costs represent 20% of revenue from drink sales. When the number of orders per day does not exceed 50, each member of the hourly uh, of the hourly paid staff is required to work extra six hours per day. For every increase of uh, five orders, the average number of orders per day, each member of staff has to work 30 minutes of overtime for which they are paid at an increased rate of 144 per hour. Electricity costs are deemed to be related to the total number of hours worked by each of the hourly paid staff and are absorbed at the rate of 35.28 per hour worked by each of the eight staff. Now assume that all costs for the hourly paid staff are treated only as variable costs. So you are required uh, a flex budget for the month of April 20. 2012, assuming that the standard mix of customers remains as budgeted, assuming that they remain as budgeted. So let's work out that. Thank you. 
Okay, so we will need to have some workings so that we can be able to get uh, to prepare our budgets so that we can be able to prepare our budgets. And the first working that we require is the actual unit in percentage. Actual units in percentage. Actual units in percentage. We say it when you are dealing with a flexible and original budget, the original budget is given 100%. So this 1200 will be 100%. So 1560 is what we need to know, it is what percent. And the simplest way of getting that is simply getting 1560, you divide by the original 1200, multiplied by 100, and tell me what percent is that. One hundred and thirty percent. One hundred and thirty percent. Now, something else that we will need to uh, arrive at is increase in daily meals or daily orders. Daily orders. And how we are going to get that, Christine, how are you? Welcome. How we are going to get that is uh, the actual turn to be 1560. While the original budget was targeted to be 1200. So that gives you the increase. But now we want a day. We want per day because we are told these guys and somewhere they are working per day according to information five. Now, according to information one, the restaurant is open six days in a week. And it works for four weeks in a month. So that means they work for 24 days. We have 15. So the increase in uh, meals per day is 15. Then we must get to know the budget labor hours. The budget labor hours. The budget labor hours where we are able to see uh, this restaurant, it has how many workers? The restaurant has eight workers. Let me see that. The restaurant has eight workers uh, who are paid on the basis of hours. Uh, and then if you go to information number one, they work for six days. So multiplied by six days. Then 
you multiply by four in a month, then we need to know in one day they are working for how many hours. Uh, according to information five, we are told they work for exactly six hours a day. So multiply by six. Eleven fifty-two. So those are the original budget hours. Those are the original budget hours. Eleven fifty-two. Then we also need to know the extra hours. Now the extra hours will come in because of the increase in uh, the meals. And according to information number what? Number five, it had said for every increase of five orders, these guys have to work eight minutes of a time for which they are paid an extra uh, rather some amount. So the hours will be judged on the basis of fives. On the basis of fives. So we already know that the total increase in, in orders, they are 15. So if you divide by five, that will tell you how many increases those are. Then for each increase, Every worker is supposed to do how many minutes? 30. So you multiply by 30. And because we are based on hours, eh? the payment is on hours, you divide by 60. That is what will happen in one day. And this one is for every worker. It is for every worker. And every day for six days and every week for four weeks. Two eight eight. According to information six, we are told that electricity which we are supposed to take as uh, valuable, we are told it depends on the number of hours worked by each of the staff and absorbed at the rate of uh, 35.28 per hour worked by each of the eight staff. So if you could confirm that, eh, we call it uh, electricity cost per hour, electricity cost. Per hour. This is what we call overhead absorption rates. The overhead absorption rates. The overhead absorption rates. So you can see the amount that is budgeted is forty thousand six forty four. Now, this was to be enough for how many hours? The budget hours were 11 .52. So, can you confirm whether this is the one that is going back to 35.28? Yes, that is how the 35.28 has been arrived at. So, based on that, we can get the actual I think now those of us we can put them as part of the budget. We can put them as part of the budget. <clears throat> so 
So we have a uh, budgetary control statements. Budgetary control statements. So in the budgetary control statements, we have a column called details. Then I told you we begin with the units. Then we bring the percentage. Then Taipanga to be the Wamepanga. We have revenue. Now revenue, we have the one from food. We have the one from drinks. For the interest of space, I want to avoid it for revenue. So that I simply say, Less we start with the variable costs, variable costs, the variable costs which are given. We have the staff wages, we have the staff wages, we have the food costs. We have drinks costs, and we have electricity. Then we have the fixed costs, the fixed costs, we have uh, managers, managers, Salary, manager salary. Then we have rent and depreciation. Rent and depreciation. And then we have net profits. Then we have net profits. Uh, I think for the interest of time, I don't know whether I'm going to have to take your feet together the way I showed you in class so that you don't start thinking they are different. <laughs> I just wanted to avoid, uh, I just wanted to bring the flexible one. But these are us, you can just copy. So the first one, in the fixed budget. The fixed budget. So fixed budget, the units are twelve hundred. And uh, twelve hundred, we have said that one is always a hundred percent. It's always a hundred percent. So it is a hundred percent. So uh, food revenue is five seventy six thousand. This is one forty four thousand. Staff wages is one ten five ninety two. Five ninety two. Then we have seventy two thousand. 
Dreams is 28,800. This other one, electricity is 4,644. The salary of the manager is uh, 103,200. And the rent is 54,000. So that the profit is 310. 764. Those ones are just a matter of copying. Then you come and bring actual results. Actual results. So we said that the value of the units of the, of the actual, we just record them the way they are 15, 16. Then you get their percent, which already we have gotten as one third percent. One third percent. I have to answer the record. This is 730080. 7030080. 9786 so that we reported a profit of Now we want to bring the flexible budget. The flexible budget. And in the flexible budget, there are two things that uh, I would want us to compute. I want us to compute <clears throat> before we do the others. That was part of the workings that I wanted. One of them, the year electricity. The electricity. Will, we are told it is based on hours. So this one will still remain for the hours that we have. For the hours that we have, then there is an excess. You see these extra hours. They will come in at a cost of 35.28. The cost of 
We all copy that. I don't know, you okay. <laughs> the reason why we are doing that is what information six says that electricity costs are being to be related to the total number of hours worked by each of the hourly paid staff and an absorbed average of that 5.28 per hour watt by each of the eight stars. So E40, it is what related to these hours. This one, 1152. You see when we divided here, we got that five. But now because the meals increased, we found that we were to increase by this number of hours. So each of these will take this much. So you multiply. The same argument will follow for the wages. We are told that these guys will be paid uh, for which they are paid uh, at the increased rate of shillings 144. So, uh, first of all, they will work no more up to 1200. So, if they work no more up to 1200, their staff wage will be this one 155.92. So sorry, 110. 110, 592. That is up to the 1,200 units. But from there now, these extra meals, these extra orders, eh, they will be worked over time. And the total hours that are required in that over time for the whole month is what we got here as 288. So we will then say 288. And every single hour now is paid at 144. Every single hour is being paid at 144. Mm -hmm. 152.064. So what we have done up to that point is slightly beyond what we covered in class. Slightly beyond what we covered in class but it's something that we know how to compute costs when they change. What we said when we discuss the flexible budgets, there are several points. One, we say that the number of units of the original budget, you assign them 100. The units of the actual, you get their new percent. Point number two was, these units of the actual will be the units of the flexible. So come here and record 15, 16 and the same percent. The units of the uh, actual and the units of the flexible. The third point that we say is uh, anything that is variable. And when we say variable, we specifically mean it is changing as per your cost driver. Now, what we are expressing is a percent here is, our, is the unit. So this is the one that is the cost driver. So any cost that will change as the units change, you would it by the new percent. So again, this brings in uh, a little bit of clarification. That is not just anything that is called variable, but 
is it firing as per your cost driver? Because you can see already here, we have labeled electricity and staff wages as what? As variable. But we have treated them differently. We have not multiplied by the percent. The reason is, it is true they are varying, they are changing, but they are not changing because of the units. They are changing because of the hours. That's why we have to get the hours here. And that's why they will not be multiplied by 100. I mean by 100%. But the others, uh, starting with revenue. So you take this revenue, 576,000 multiplied by 1.3. So that we make it 130%. Seven for change returns. This other one is one for four thousand multiplied by one point three. One in the seventh one. One in the seventh one. I have put up our food costs. Now, food costs, we are told by information three that they are 12.5% of revenue from food. So you simply get this revenue of food, that is 748,800 times 0.125. Ninety-three, six hundred. You could also have just multiplied it by one point three. The same way to the final five. Either they should give you the same answer. Alafu we will give it twenty uh one eight seven two hundred. This one is uh twenty percent. So if you get 20% of that, that's seven for 40. That's seven for 40. Uh, William McGinney is, uh, the other point now I told you is that, the fixed costs, those ones you remain, they remain as they are in the original. So 103, 200, 103, 200, and this other one is 54,000. So work out that now and give me the new profits. Mm -hmm. uh, Christine says for that four seven that. For that four seven thirty point. Seven two. Seven 
Is it confirmed? Confirmed, eh? Okay, so you need to confirm. That is great. May 2014, question Yeah, which which is the one yes which one so 60 it is what let me also be a witness it should be 46 44 plus 288 times 35.28, 58 to 4.64. You know? So even this now is affected. So 58 to 4.64, Yes, Christine says we should have five. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, at one I can see it. So the new profit is uh, four. Four four eight nine one. Good, I can see that.
So I'm saying the next question now is May 2014. May 2014, question uh, 1C. So the question reads, that cons limited manufactures and sells three products, namely A, B, and C. The budgeted production overhead cost for the financial year ending 30th of June 2015 are as follows. We have the setup, the material handling, the inspection, total production overheads. The budgeted details of the products for the financial year ending 30th of June are as follows. We are given that. So we are required using activity-based budgeting, calculate the total budget production overhead cost for each of the products, for each of the products. Okay. Uh, so that is activity based costing. And with activity based costing, we start with the setup. We start with the setup activity. Setup activity. So in the setup activity, the overhead absorption rate will be the budget costs, the budget costs. This one will be driven by setups, budget setups, budget setups. So uh, if we have a product, the product here and the setups, we'll have products, we need to know the setups. We start with the part A. You can see the number of setups depend on the number of batches. See and obviously the batches will depend on how many units you are producing. So for product A, we are producing 10,000 units. And they are produced in batches of what? A hundred. Then each batch will require two setups. Each batch will require two setups. That will give us what? Huh? 200. Then for product B, for product B, we will have uh, 16,000 divided by 200, then you multiply by three, 240. For product C, you will have 18,000, you divide by 300, You multiply by six 
360. 360. 360. So therefore, the OER, the OER will be 448 million. Four forty-eight million divided by two hundred plus two forty plus three sixty. Five sixty. Five sixty thousand. <clears throat> uh -huh. I think uh, the per unit of multiplication is the break of the instead of double up. Leave the tosha. So to add it to the next one, but you are three and fifteen. Material hardening activity. So the OAR will be the budget costs you divide. This one we can drive it by the movement, eh? material movements. Budget movements, <clears throat> budget movements. So we base uh, we have one ninety three six hundred million. And the movements are sixteen five thirty plus twenty nine thirty eight plus seventeen six thirty two. That five thirteen point six one. That five thirteen point six one. Ah, uh, here give me the instruction. Inspection activity. So the OAR will again be budget costs. We divide by budget. So this one we are going to be driven by what? Budget inspections, eh? Budget inspections. So this one <coughs> is three oh eight eight hundred three oh eight eight hundred thousand and the inspections are eleven eight eight plus seventeen eight two. Plus twenty four part seven 
1.85.19. So with those OERs, now we are ready to prepare the so-called uh, activity-based budgets. Activity based budget for production overhead costs, production overhead costs, production overhead costs. So we have the activity here. The activity we have uh, set up. We are here in material handling. Material handling. You give me inspection. And then I will have the top tank. So we can begin with product A. So product A, what you shall do, you will take the OER. The OER is this five six. Multiply by the number of setups that are there in A, 200. Get your answer. We put up our material hard ring, where the OER, that 513.61. Multiply by the movement, which are 16, 5, that. We put up our wing in it, but you put our OER 57185.19 times 11 in the H. You come and do the same rating for product B. Product B, the square five sixty thousand. We gonna two forty setups. The square that five that ten point six one times twenty nine that eight. Rafu fifty seven one eight five point one nine times seventeen eight two. I believe you'll be able to do the same for products as well. So do that so that we proceed to the next question.
Yeah, through. Okay. So if we are finished, the next on the line is uh, May twenty sixteen. May So May 2016, question 4B, would use limited operates a standard marginal cost accounting system. The information relating to product X, which is manufactured in one of the company's department is given below. So we are given all that. And then we are told to pay in Corona format, the original budget, the friends, and the action. And then the statement reconciling the actual and the whatever. Okay. We, we saw that. Eh? Are you comfortable with that? We saw. Okay. So once again, that one does not have much workings like the other one. So it's uh, still a budgetary control statement. Budgetary control statement. So we have details. Details, we have said you begin with units, then you have percentage. Units, then you have percentage. And the items that are here in this question, we have revenue then we will less variable costs now the variable cost we have direct materials direct materials then we have direct labor Then we have overheads, 
we have overhead. Then we come to the fixed cost. So the fixed cost, we have chart one, the overhead. And that is all, we will get the net profit. We will get net profit. So we have the fixed budget. Remember the fixed budget is the original budget. Mina is a funga, don't think it has workings. Then I have actual results. Actual results, even this one, I don't think it has workings. In the Takuana workings is the flexible budget. So this is the one that we will wait to see how far it will get. So, in dealing with this, according to information number three, you can see the budget units, they are 20,000. Eh? So, the units are 20,000, and therefore the percentage is 100%. 100. According to information four, the selling price is uh, 440. So if you multiply, you get uh, how much? Eight million eight hundred thousand. Eight billion eight hundred thousand. Ah, yeah. The materials you can see each unit was two forty. So two forty times twenty thousand. Four point eight million. Ah, yeah. Then. Labor, it is 70, so 70 times uh, 20, hmm? 1.4 million. Ah, yeah. Then the overhead is uh, 30, so that times whatever, 600, 600,000. Then the fixed, the budget, eh? uh, it is mentioned in information two, that was a cool one million. So based on that, give me the, Oh, exactly one million. Okay. Exactly one million. I am. Where the actual results? 
actual according to information uh, five, the units that were produced there were 18,500. So give me the new percentage. If 100% is 20, 18,500 is what percent? 92.5. So, to get the revenue, you now multiply the selling price. The selling price is up for 480. So, 480 times those units. Eight million eight hundred eight thousand. Material cost that is already provided, so we just copy four million four twenty six thousand five hundred uh, one million two ninety nine four hundred then five eight eight and then ten forty. One million five hundred twenty six one hundred. So this one, because we now know the percentage here, uh, I can start here so that I know where I can get to eight million eight hundred thousand. Multiplied by zero point nine two five. Eight fourteen. Number okay. eight. The two fourteen. Good. All right. So that is two. It was up. It was Yeah, it was one foot. So the units are eighteen five hundred, and the percent is ninety two point five percent. I have twenty four material. You say me four million eight hundred thousand times zero point nine two five. Forty four forty. Then one million four hundred thousand multiplied by zero point nine two five. Twelve ninety five. I have six hundred thousand times zero point nine two five. Five fifty five thousand and the fixed your you retain it.
Christine, we are talking. Eight, eight are in fifth above. Eight are in fifth above. We are okay there. So I told you the other day, I told you when you have grown these ones, eh, you can also compute the variances here and just the concept, just the differences between this budget and the actual. They will still reconcile. I think there's a question we had of that. Too. But this one, why I will avoid that approach is because the examiner is keen on saying you will show all the operating what variances. So that means we'll have to show how we are computing them. So we will just use our normal formats. Our normal formats. So we are drawing something called profit reconciliation statements and this one we always begin with the details then we have the budget profits then we bring the variances. The variances that we bring, we know so well, we begin with sales price, followed by sales volume, followed by total material costs, Total material costs followed by total labor costs followed by total variable overhead, variable overhead costs. And the last one, when they are not stopped, is the fixed overhead, fixed overhead expenditure variance, or expenditure variance. And then we have the actual profit. Do I have to show the formulas again, or we can substitute strings? Oops. So, workings. 
So the best value to start with is this one for the sale in price because that one has a working. And we know you take the budget selling price of 440, you minus the actual selling price of 480, 480, you multiply by actual unit sold, 18,500. Uh -huh. 740,000. Now, this 740,000 is it favorable or adverse? Favorable because the actual selling price was small. Now to my director, the budget profit. Budget profit is equal to my pata one billion. Eh? So you record it here. You've got the one million in the budget. Higher sales volume is given as budget sales units, which were 20,000 minus actual sales units, which were 18,500. Multiplied by standard contribution margin. So standard contribution margin with like what I said, to go ahead and sell price, the budget, 440. 440 minus uh, 340, yeah, I think I'm going to add it. So I can add a screen example. 440 minus 340, yeah. That's exactly 100, yeah. So how much? 150,000. Now, this 150,000 is favorable or advanced? It's advanced it's because we sold fewer units. It's advanced because we sold fewer. Standard material costs is uh, 240. Times the actual unit produced, you minus the actual material cost of four million four twenty six thousand five hundred. Thirteen thousand five hundred. The variable had passed. Negative or positive? So if it's positive, that is the variable. Manisha actually no. I have a which is seventy times eighteen thousand five hundred minus twelve ninety nine four hundred. Four thousand four hundred. So it's advanced. Then for the variable, it is that times eighteen five hundred minus five eighty eight. The actual.
Dat is 3000. Je moet naar boven, pas. Pas. De fixed overhead expenditure is uh, budget fixed overhead to so 1 million. You raise the actual of 1040. And that gives us uh, 40,000, which is advanced. And the budget profit was uh, what? 1 million. No, no, the actual profit. 1 million 26,100. That is what we got in the actual results. So check whether they record that. We say you add the paper apples, you less their parts. It's okay, yeah? So now you can finish up the other one on your own, May 2017, question 3C. That one I don't think I should do. The interest of time. So if that is agreed, Safari part of the We can now turn to June 2013, question three. So June 2013, question number three says that Safari Limited manufactures seat covers for the automobile industry. The company has a number of uh, plants in the region, including a plant in the Doret. Seat covers made of leather are soon at El Doret plant. The Doret plant manager also serves as the regional production manager for the company. His budget as the regional production manager is charged to the brand. An external vendor has offered bid to surprise Safari Limited or Safari Limited 
with rather seat covers equivalent to the entire annual output of the direct plant for shillings 42 million. The plant manager was surprised at the low bid because the budget to the plant operating cost for the financial year ending 30th of June 2014 has been set at shillings 48.6 million. If this offer is accepted, the plant will be closed. <coughs> The budget for the direct plant operating cost for the financial year ending that 1st of June 2014 is as follows. We have the materials, we have labor, direct supervision, indirect overhead, we have the position of the equipment and the building, pension expenses, plant manager and staff salaries, corporate expenses as no sixes, and then total costs. So additional information, <clears throat> one is that purchase orders for bulk quantities have been placed with major suppliers to ensure the receipt of sufficient materials for the financial year ending 30th of June 2014. These orders are canceled as a consequence of the plant closing. Termin uh, termination charges with about 25% of the cost of indirect materials. Approximately 350 workers will lose their jobs if the plant is closed. This includes all of the direct plant workers and supervisors, management staff, uh, and other skilled workers classified as indirect plant workers. Nearly all the production workers would have difficulty in finding a job that matches the direct plant's base pay of shillings 25 per hour, which is the highest in the area. A clause in the contract with the trade union may help some employees. Under this clause, the company must provide employment assistance and job training to its former employees if the plant is closed. The estimated cost to administer this service would be shillings 1.6 million. Some employees would probably choose early retirement because Safiri Limited has an excellent pension plan. In fact, shillings 1.4 billion of the annual pension expense would continue to be incurred whether the plant is open or not. Uh, if the plant was closed, the company would realize approximately shillings 4 million as salvage value for the equipment in the plant. If the plant remains open, there are no plans to make any significant investment in new equipment or buildings. The old equipment is adequate for the job and should last indefinitely. The fixed corporate expenses are located to plant and other operating units based on total budget wage and salary costs. Now, we are required, number one, to give the annual budgeted costs that are relevant to the position regarding the closing of the plant. Number two, the annual budgeted costs that are not relevant to the position. And we explain your answer. So what we shall do, we shall just name the costs. Uh, then the amounts, we shall show them in uh, part B, because B in a similar will show complications. Okay, so if we are going to close this plant, if we are going to close, are you okay? Huh? You don't seem set up. <laughs> <laughs> You're already tired. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Because maybe we have read eh? uh, just not more than 10 minutes. I just give you the answers. Then you will go and see what to do with them. <laughs> So the relevant costs, one, we are now answering Roman one. One is termination charges on materials. 
contamination charges on materials. Contamination charges on materials. Number two is employment assistance and job training costs. Employment assistance and job training costs. Job training costs. Number three is specific pension expenses. Specific pension, the ones that we are told they will continue. The other one is uh, salvage value of the equipment. Salvage value of the equipment. And the last one is uh, other direct costs. Other direct costs. Ah, yeah. That is the Roman one. Roman two, the irrelevant costs. Irrelevant costs. One is the continued pension expenses. Continued pension expenses. Number two is depreciation on equipment and buildings. Depreciation on equipment and building. Another one is a uh, plant manager. Plant manager and staff salaries. And staff salaries. And the last one is fixed corporate expenses. Fixed. Corporate expenses. All right. <laughs> hope you still have the energy to do it. All right. They're asking any, I think we have answered that one. Eh? Then the other one is uh, benefits of closing, benefits of closing, the benefits of closing. One is salvage value of the equipment of equipment. If we close this branch, we will uh, save 4 million. Number two, we will have materials. Materials will be 75% of 16 million. 75% of 16 million, which is 12 million. That will not be cut again. There will be labor, direct labor, direct labor of 13 million 400. 13 million 400. Then there is the supervision. Supervision of 800,000. Uh, there is indirect, uh, this labor was direct. So then there is another one, the labor which is uh, indirect. Indirect of uh, three. Million eight hundred
there is pension pension which is uh, 3.2 minus 1.4 so that would be 1.8 million then expenses of closing if you gross, what is it that will suffer? One is a uh, purchase of output, purchase costs. You will have to pay these guys for two million so that they give you the seats. Number two, there is material in the salsa in the poor waste, which is now 25% of 16 million. That would be four million. That would be four million. The training, the training costs. The training costs is one point six million. So from there you will get the net benefits. Net benefits, and I think as well in Yatiapo should be okay. Get the net benefit, your first of advice, and then your at the beginning and this one. So we stop there for now. We come from there. So we have two more lessons there. Eh? Those lessons are supposed to end on Tuesday. So two more lessons. Thank you so much.